CinemaCon was this week, and we have plenty of new horror goodness coming out of the event to talk about. We also saw the first trailer for Ty West's Maxine, and a new song was released from the master himself, John Carpenter. We're going to talk about it all right now as we wrap up the week in horror movie news. CinemaCon, billed as the largest gathering of movie theater owners from around the world, took place in Las Vegas this week. The event for those in the theatrical business started in 2011. It features keynote sessions, panels, product presentations, and most importantly for us, studio presentations. This year featured presentations by Warner Brothers, Disney, Lionsgate, Universal, Paramount, and more, with each of the studios showcasing films from their upcoming theatrical slates. It's an event that exists to hype up the theatrical experience, and there is nothing wrong with that. I love hype, even if it leads to letdown. So let's dive in and take a look at some of the horror movies from this past week's CinemaCon that we may or may not be let down by in the upcoming months. Let's start with the Shyamalans. That's right, plural. Ishana Knight Shyamalan was first up showing footage from her upcoming film, The Watchers. This is her feature-length debut, but she has worked with her dad as a second unit director on Old and Knock at the Cabin. She also directed and wrote several episodes of Servant on Apple+. Plus. This is based on a novel by A.M. Shine. In the novel, a woman named Mina is left stranded in the woods where she finds a woman shouting for her to run to a concrete bunker. As Mina enters the bunker, she finds herself in a room surrounded by glass along with a group of strangers, all of them being observed by a mysterious group of creatures called the Watchers. The footage shown at CinemaCon looks to stick pretty close to that synopsis, with Dakota Fanning in the lead role leaving the bar following a date and her car breaking down in the woods. An old woman runs her to the bunker and tells her she has five seconds before the door is sealed. The trailer goes on to show the group of people being watched and observed by the watchers. So there you go. It seems very similar to the book. The movie will be out June 14th. Her dad, M. Night Shyamalan, was also at CinemaCon and presented footage from his new movie, Trap. The footage shown introduces us to Lady Raven, a pop star, taking the concert stage with Josh Hartnett's character looking on from the crowd with his daughter. We then see Hartnett encountering police on his way to the bathroom, where he finds out that the concert was all an elaborate trap to lure out a serial killer named The Butcher. The footage goes on to reveal one of the big twists of the movie, which I will not spoil here, although I can see it being spoiled in one of the official trailers because it seems like it might be the film's big selling point. M. Night's Trapped is out in cinemas a few months after his daughter's film on August 2nd. It's the summer of Shyamalan. And then, what was probably the main event of the Warner's presentation, at least horror-wise, was a sizzle reel from Beetlejuice Beetlejuice with Michael Keaton, Catherine O'Hara, Willem Dafoe, Justin Theroux, and Monica Bellucci, and Tim Burton, all in attendance. While introducing the footage, Burton described the production as a weird family reunion, and he revealed that he had been kicking around the idea for a sequel for three decades. Keaton chimed in, saying that they had finally got it right, and that the movie was really blanking good. Catherine O'Hara also stated that if people don't like it, then F them. I assume she was joking, maybe not. One of the more intriguing and encouraging revelations from the event was from Willem Dafoe, who said that there were plenty of practical effects being used for the movie. The actual footage shown sounds similar to the trailer released a few weeks back, but expanded as it features writers Lydia and Ortega's Astrid at a funeral, and then Lydia summoning Beetlejuice. It also showed off the first look at Monica Bellucci's character as Beetlejuice's wife, and we also got a look at Justin Theroux's character, Rory, who seems to be a close acquaintance of the Dietz family being scared by Beetlejuice. The footage is said to show off some of those practical effects Defoe talked about, with footage of Beetlejuice vomiting out gray guts and animation similar to the stop-motion animation used in the original film. I remain cautiously optimistic. I take all of the comments at CinemaCon with a grain of salt as this event exists to hype the movies for cinema owners and movie fans, but even though Burton has been more missed than hit for me since Sleepy Hollow, I think, I like this cast and I really want to like this movie. I will find out if I do like this movie on September 6th. The Warner's presentation wrapped up with a couple of quick greetings from Maggie Gyllenhaal on the set of her Frankenstein movie, The Bride, as well as Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan on the set of their mysterious new vampire movie, which had a couple of casting announcements in the past week as well. Delroy Lindo was announced, but his role is still unknown. 
Wunmi Masaku from Loki and Lovecraft Country was announced, but her role is still unknown. And Haley Steinfeld was announced as joining the cast, and as of this time, you guessed it, her role is still unknown. Regardless of all the unknowns, I cannot wait for this movie. Lionsgate took the stage on Wednesday and dropped one piece of big news that we'll talk about before we get into the footage shown during their presentation. But it was announced that Lionsgate and Blumhouse are teaming up to develop a new Blair Witch movie. Also in the bloody disgusting article on the presentation is information that I did not know and that is quite interesting. It said that this will be the first film in a multi-picture pact with Blumhouse reimagining horror classics from the Lionsgate library. Willie and I actually talked about this on the podcast a little bit. So if you want to listen to us decide which movies from the Lionsgate library should or shouldn't get remade, reimagined, check out our podcast, Horror Movie Yearbook. It's on YouTube. It's on Spotify, it's on iTunes, it's on all that good stuff. But as far as The Blair Witch goes, not much was announced with regard to details on the project, but Lionsgate Motion Picture Group Chair Adam Fogelson said, We are thrilled to kick this partnership off with a new vision for Blair Witch that will reintroduce this horror classic for a new generation. We couldn't be more pleased to be working with them on this and other projects we look forward to revealing soon. Remake, legacy sequel, who knows? I'm a fan of every movie in the series to some degree and for different reasons. I was of the right age when the first movie came out and it still works for me. The second one, I like due to how wacky it is. I'll leave it at that. And I actually dug The Blair Witch from 2016, directed by Adam Wingard and written by Simon Barrett. I thought I had some interesting ideas, even if it didn't fully click. Lionsgate also introduced a little bit of new footage from the Crow reboot. This footage was said to be more focused on the Eric and Shelley relationship in the film. There was also a montage of Eric Draven's healing ability, which was also showcased in the official trailer for the movie. The footage descriptions read like an extended version of that trailer. The one new piece of news regarding the Crow remake this week came along with the shifting of Lionsgate's upcoming film slate, as the film was pushed back from June 7th to August 23rd. Honestly, this feels like an end of summer August movie anyway. When I say August movies, I'm thinking of Ghost of Mars, Triple X, Alien vs. Predator. I think you get the idea there. Along with that release date shifting by Lionsgate, the studio announced that Saw 11, along with that release date shifting by Lionsgate, the studio announced that Saw 11 will be pushed back to September 26, 2025. I'm torn on this. The turnaround time, especially with the strike, seemed really quick, but I also wouldn't turn down a yearly Saw movie during Halloween, like we used to get. Luckily, the September release date means that it will still be in theaters during that time of year. CinemaCon goers also got an extended look at what is being described as an origin story of how these strangers came to be in The Strangers Chapter 1. The first film in a trilogy by Rennie Harlan and starring Madeline Petch, aka Cheryl Blossom from Riverdale, This trilogy is still planned to be released this year. All of them. We'll see. It worked for Fear Street. The footage shown at CinemaCon showed Petch heading to a cabin in the woods, always risky, with her partner. Then, following a knock at the door, an axe almost breaks through the door and tags her. It's followed by a montage of the strangers doing, well, their stranger thing, and torturing the leads. The first part of the trilogy is still scheduled to be released next month, May 17th. It sounds like the second part is coming this fall. Next up during the Lionsgate presentation was a movie that I just heard of this week for the first time. It's Alexander Acha's Never Let Go, starring Halle Berry. I always look forward to an Alexander Acha movie. He's coming off the Netflix movie Oxygen in 2021, his last directorial effort, and Crawl in 2019, which I really liked and thought it was a perfect fit for his style. Never Let Go sounds interesting. Comparing it to recent movies, it sounds a lot like family survival thrillers like Bird Box or A Quiet Place. Here's a description of the trailer from The Hollywood Reporter. The footage showed Barry and her two fraternal twins living a gritty off-the-grid life in a remote house in the woods, seemingly after an apocalyptic event. A voiceover explains the plot further as one of the boys says, Nothing could hurt them as long as they stay connected to their home. At one point, Barry says to them, I know this life has been hard on you boys since the world ended, but the evil out there is clever. One touch without a rope is all that it takes. Never let go. Later, she doubles down by saying, that rope is your lifeline. Never let go. Say it. The movie also released a pretty simple poster this week, which did announce that the film would be taking the place of Saw 11th on September 27th. Okay, let's stay on Wednesday, but jump over to Universal. 
the sequel to Five Nights at Freddy's was confirmed to be coming next fall sometime. They also released a couple of photos. Jason Blum on his Twitter showed the team at Jim Henson's Creature Shop working on the animatronics for the next film. And those are really the only two pieces of news we got this week. We did get some Wolfman updates. Following the news that it would be pushed to January 17th, 2025, the Blumhouse reimagining of The Wolfman from director Lee Wanell presented a little bit of footage at the convention. The footage shows Larry Talbot, aka The Wolfman, who will be played by Christopher Abbott from Poor Things, Possessor, It Comes at Night, sitting with his daughter inside a cabin in the woods. Here we go again. Talbot senses danger and believes that something is stalking his family from outside the cabin. I think we know what that something could be and probably what it will be. The trailer makes it sound like the story follows the mother and daughter trying to survive the father, Talbot. It also sounds like the footage does show at least the beginning of the transformation into the Wolfman, but out of frame and with a silhouette. A few weeks before the Wolfman on Christmas Day is another reimagining that I am very excited for, and that is Robert Eggers' Nosferatu, which, you guessed it, showed off some footage at CinemaCon. Here is what Discussing Film had to say about the footage. The trailer opens with Lily Rose Depp as Anna Harding saying, Come to me, hear my call, right before a hand reaches out to grab her. She goes on to say, Evil comes from beyond, and tells Willem Dafoe, sporting a giant white beard, that he is coming to us, while laying in a hospital bed, plagued by some kind of sickness. We then cut to atmospheric shots of 19th century Germany, quick glimpses of a gothic castle, a horrifying cemetery, the local city, and its many citizens carrying around coffins. We see a side profile of Nosferatu's iconic hook nose, followed by his dark and imposing silhouette floating down a giant hallway. Big presentation for silhouettes, apparently. The trailer ends with Defoe's character seemingly coming face to face with this creature and chillingly saying Nosferatu. One last piece of news from the panel was a trailer for the remake of Speak No Evil, a Blumhouse produced remake of a Danish film from 2022, which I have not seen. The remake is directed by James Watkins, who did Woman in Black and Eden Lake, two films I have seen and enjoy, and it stars James McAvoy, Scoot McNary, and Mackenzie Davis. The trailer is available online now for everyone. Thursday was Paramount's turn. The studio announced plans to restart the Scary Movie franchise with a new movie produced by Neil H. Moritz, the man behind the Sonic and Fast and Furious franchises. This will be the first Scary Movie entry in over a decade, so there is plenty of stuff to spoof, including sequels to long dormant horror franchises. Paramount also announced a reimagining of The Running Man, which is great timing as Stephen King's or Richard Bachman's original novel took place in the year 2025. Glenn Powell is set to star as he is in most things, it seems, and Edgar Wright, he of course of Shaun of the Dead fame, amongst many other films, is set to direct. No real details on the plot or whether it will stick closer to the Schwarzenegger movie from 87 or King's original novel. I had read, I think Bloody Disgusting said it was rumored to stick closer to King's novel? We'll see. Footage time. Smile 2 showed off some footage and gave attendees a closer look at what the plot of the film is going to revolve around. Here's what Slash Film wrote about the footage shown. The teaser footage for Smile 2 that played at CinemaCon 2024 was focused on a new character played by Naomi Scott, a music celeb whose glamorous world is about to get dragged to hell. After a few glimpses of her pop star performances, the footage showed Scott's character getting a shock when a man, played by Lucas Gage, breaks into her dressing room and smiles creepily at her. A big year for pop star related horror. The Taylor Swift effect, I guess. Smile 2 will be out this Halloween season on October 18th. CinemaCon attendees also got a little bit of new footage from A Quiet Place Part 1. Lupita Nyong'o and Joseph Quinn were on hand to show off extended footage of the upcoming prequel, which takes us back to the day of the alien invasion. The footage started with CEO Brian Robbins asking the crowd what would happen if New York City went quiet, which is a nice hook for this movie, and the footage itself mirrors a lot of the first trailer, but goes on to show Central Park with a massive crater in the middle of it, and a look at government bomb bridges done in hopes of trying to contain the invasion. There was also a shot of a map that shows all of the different alien landings all over the world. It sounds like the scope of this one is going to be pretty big, and it will be out this summer on June 28th. And then we are going to move over to Disney. Yes, Disney. We have a horror update from Disney. They took the stage and showed off an extended look at Alien Romulus. And here is what JoeBlow.com had to say of that footage. 
An exclusive extended scene from Romulus was screened at CinemaCon, which followed Kaylee Spaney's character wandering through a broken down spaceship corridor with Eileen Wu's character. They see a ripped apart android among the debris. David Johnson's character, who is an android himself, is rebooting with an interesting effect in his eyes. But at that moment, a swarm of facehuggers burst into the room, chasing the characters out. We saw a bit of this scene in the teaser. One character turns out to have been impregnated by a facehugger, with a baby xenomorph bursting through their ribcage in an extremely bloody scene. The facehugger and baby xeno are quite close to their appearances in the original movie, and best of all, they've been done with beautiful practical effects. So there you go. Along with Beetlejuice, it sounds like Alien is going back to practical effects, which is great news. There was one last bit of news out of CinemaCon that wasn't part of the heavy hitters presentations, but it was announced on Tuesday at the convention that Iconic Events will be releasing Terrifier 3 theatrically on October 25th of this year. Following its theatrical run, Cineverse will release the film across platforms, including its Screambox horror streaming service. The release of this will be very similar to Terrifier 2's. All right, you got all that? Did I miss anything? Probably. We have to move on, though. And we are moving on to Maxine, because the first trailer for Ty West's Maxine debuted early in the week. The trailer shows Maxine six years following the events of X, having become a name in the adult film industry. That name being Maxine Minx, and she's beginning to break into horror films in the 1980s in Hollywood. In the film, Minx is auditioning for a film entitled The Puritan, hoping that it will be her big break into legitimate acting all while a mysterious killer, the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, in real life, is murdering women in Hollywood. The trailer is chock full of Ty West paying tribute to the 80s, with Obsession by Animotion playing in the background, along with neon lights, a video store, 80s hair, it's Ty West doing what Ty West does. The film also gives us a real glimpse at what is really a great cast. We see Kevin Bacon as a private detective warning Maxine that the past isn't finished with her yet. Michelle Monaghan and Bobby Cannavale as LAPD officers investigating the murders. Giancarlo Esposito shows up as her agent and Halsey as her best friend walking the streets alongside her. The trailer also shows off some very intriguing shots of the Bates Motel and the Psycho House where we get a glimpse of Pearl in the window. This might be a Universal Studios backlot tour? I'm not sure. We also see victims marked with pentagrams, which is something that Richard Ramirez was known for doing, as well as an indication of what looks to be a cult towards the end of the trailer, which ends with Maxine repeating her mantra, which I will not repeat here, into a mirror. I really like this trailer. I think Ty West has grown a lot as a filmmaker, and I really loved X. I wasn't as big a fan of Pearl, but I still liked it. I think West has gotten better at marrying his obsessions, pun intended, with human emotion, and it's part of why I am looking forward to Maxine so much as a capper on this trilogy of films. The trailer is online now, if somehow you haven't seen it, and Maxine will be released in theaters on July 5th. All right, let's do some quick hitters and get out of here. Variety reported that the Sam Raimi-produced horror thriller Don't Move was acquired by Netflix. The movie follows a serial killer who injects a grieving woman with a paralytic deep in a forest. As it takes over her body, she must fight for her life as her nervous system shuts down. This is directed by Adam Neto and Adam Schindler, who directed the Grey Cloud Island, Minnesota episode of the Raimi-produced 50 States of Fright Quibi series, which I actually had a lot of fun with. No word on a release date yet for Don't Move, though. Speaking of Netflix, it was announced that Takashi Miike's Lumberjack the Monster is heading to the service on June 1st, only a few weeks away from its May 6th North American premiere. Here's the synopsis from the official site. Akira is a remorseless lawyer who doesn't hesitate to eliminate anyone who stands in his way. One night he is brutally attacked by an unknown assailant wearing a monster mask. Although he miraculously survives the assault, he becomes fixated on finding the attacker and getting revenge. Meanwhile, a series of gruesome murders occur where the victims are found with their brains removed from their bodies. While police conduct an intensive investigation, Akira seeks revenge against the assaulter. Who will uncover the truth first? That sounds like a Mike movie, and it'll be out May 6th. Greg McLean, director of both Wolf Creek movies as well as Rogue, The Belko Experiment, among others, will return to directing for the first time in seven years with Graveyard Smash. Deadline reports that the movie will start production this year and is about a young woman desperate to find her missing sister and her three best friends who find themselves trapped inside a virtual reality game where every level forces its players to survive a different genre of a horror movie. That's a pretty fun premise, I'm not gonna lie. 
Also, Deadline has reported that Nia DaCosta, director of the Candyman remake from a couple years back, is in talks to direct the second entry in the upcoming 28 Years Later trilogy. That's right, trilogy. The first entry is being filmed by Danny Boyle later this year, but quick trilogies seem to be all the rage right now, and it's reported that the studio wants to bring in a director as soon as possible so that they are on the same page as Boyle and writer Alex Garland, who will be writing each installment. All right, and let's close it out with the master, John Carpenter, who along with his son Cody and his godson Daniel Davies released a new song this week from their forthcoming album Lost Themes for Noir. I love all the Lost Themes albums, and I will probably love this one as well. He Walks By Night is the title of the new song, and it is available to stream wherever you stream, and the album is available to pre-order or pre-download before its release on May 3rd, only a few weeks away. Thank you everybody for listening. That is the news for this week. If you enjoyed this and want to hear more, of course, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff on YouTube. Also, if you want to hear our podcast, Horror Movie Yearbook, check us out wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. We're on here as well. So thank you once again, everybody, for listening, and I'll see you next time.